Welcome to EFN's Virtual Abundance event. We are so sad to not have you here with us tonight. I'm Michelle Douglas, CEO of Emergency Food Network. I'm Elizabeth Howe. I'm the Development Director here at Emergency Food Network. And unfortunately, Alice Phillips, our board chair, was unable to be here tonight. We miss you. We appreciate everything that you do, Alice. Um, sorry you couldn't be with us today. We miss you, Alice. I also want to say thank you on behalf of all of the EFN staff members. We are so grateful to have you here tonight at our virtual event. So I have been here at EFN for, I can't believe it's been this long, but uh, a little over nine years now. Almost a decade. Yes. Uh, and it's one of my favorite things about EFN is that we have these longtime donors and volunteers who have been supporting EFN and our mission for many decades. It's just so impressive. So thank you so much to all of our longtime supporters. And if it's your first time here tonight. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And we are really promising that hopefully this is our last virtual abundance. Yeah, I cannot tell you how much we miss you all. We were so hoping to see your smiling faces and give you hugs and just get to have that experience of all being together in a room again. Uh, however, I did threaten Elizabeth that I was going to wear pajamas if we had to go virtual again, <laughs> and I have abstained from that. So, Thank you. Um, you know, but we do really, really miss you. And just a reminder, we still have auction items that you can bid on. It's open until tomorrow night at eight o'clock. So if you're in a bidding war, or maybe you haven't just started to bid yet, you still have an opportunity. Tomorrow night, eight o'clock. There the are incredible things on that auction as well. I mean, you do not want to miss out and you don't want me to swoop in at the last minute and get your item. Uh, no, Michelle's competitive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I want to start tonight with the word that I keep coming back to in my entire time here at EFN, which is gratitude. I want to thank the EFN staff. I want to thank our board, our ambassador board. I want to thank the 70 food pantries that partner with us. I want to thank the many, many, many volunteers and donors and people that do incredible food drives and drop them off at our mm -hmm. door. Just there's so many people that make this agency possible. And um, I want you to know you have our deepest gratitude. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, we get food out in a lot of different ways, and the program I'm most excited about that we started in response to the pandemic was our home delivery program. So that started in 2020. We started with just about five families. We upped it to over 200 a week at this point, mm -hmm. and it's just been a wonderful way to think about how do we get community food that they need today. Um, we're on track to distribute 16 million pounds of food. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, and really, I mean, it's like a, it's an unfathomable number to say 16 million pounds of food. But when you think about what that means for families, that's really getting three meals a day into their households. Um, that is being sure that kids aren't hungry going to school and that parents have the food that they need to eat to thrive. So we're really proud of it. We are. We're, as a whole staff, we are so proud of the quantity of food that we are putting out into the community. And it's really about all the unique ways that donors and volunteers really assist EFN in our mission. We're just so grateful. And one of the things that I know Michelle really loves about her job and I really love about my job is that we get a chance to really talk to people and understand like, how did they come to EFN? Why did they support the organization and the mission? And it seems like everyone has that like specific moment or that one circumstance that really had a long time effect on them. And I call they, it their hunger story. Yeah, everyone seems to have it when they come to you know work with EFN or to volunteer. I know that I have my story that started back when I was in elementary school. My grandma Betty, who just was a big person who enjoyed being in the community and helping out, she really wanted to start serving the community every single month by providing a meal. And so she would prepare the menu, she would purchase all the items, and then she would gather you know, the parents, the cousins, the aunt and uncle, all of my siblings, uh, some of her closest friends, and then we would do all the preparation of the food and serve it every single month. And this went on for years and years and years, and it was just part of our tradition. And I know that so many of our volunteers and donors, they had these similar stories that brought them to us, which we're just so grateful for. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It sounds like your grandma Betty and my gram were very similar. Mm -hmm. um, it's my first learning of the word voluntold. Um, <laughs> yes. And really, I grew up the same way, right? We had a table that expanded um, mm -hmm. that never didn't have room for another person. I too grew up volunteering and um, you know, I think that's where my commitment that everybody should have the basics of being able to eat today yeah. was formed. Absolutely. And, and uh, I don't just don't think there's anything more fundamental than that. There's not. So uh, I, I just think that as we think about that and how we work together to keep our neighbors fed, um, one of the areas that I think we're really excelling at that in and where we really need that support and we work together is Mother Earth Farm. So, a Mother Earth Farm. Who does not love our beautiful Mother Earth Farm? Yeah, eight acres out in the Puyallup Valley. Just beautiful, fresh, organically grown produce. So we have a video from our incredible co-manager out there, Tara. So there you go, Tara. Thanks, Michelle. I'm here at Mother Earth Farm, EFN's eight acre farm in the Puyallup Valley, where we grow over 100,000 pounds of fresh organic produce for our neighbors. It gives me such great joy to work with the earth to feed our community. At EFN, we're always looking for ways to create change within our food systems, including our Grow Your Food Seed Start program, which provides vegetable starts to our community for free. Can you believe that this squash start became this butternut squash? This plant will yield approximately 10 butternut squash, which at the grocery store would amount to approximately $40. Uh, Tara, you are wonderful. Thank you so much for that. We love all of our Mother Earth Farm staff and volunteers. They are so dedicated. Rain or shine, they are on that farm. It is truly one of the harder jobs. I know. Those starts that she mentioned, Yeah, they grew over 20,000. 20,000 starts out in the community. It was really our effort to disrupt what we saw as what was going to be a huge food mm -hmm. shortage. Yeah. You know, and I mean, we're seeing it so much now with supply chain talk and so forth. But when the pandemic first hit, we didn't know how people were going to get food. And we thought, oh, you know what? If we started giving people the food that they could grow on their balconies, on their porches, mm -hmm. in their yards, at least we would have some local food. Yeah. I'm not saying we've solved it, but I am saying we're impacting no, it. No, 20,000. That is a huge number, uh, which is why Mother Earth Farm truly is so amazing. And we also had the opportunity to partner with two new local farms, which we really loved. It was so, it was all thanks actually to the Farm to Food Pantry program. Uh, we received funds from them and we were able to purchase food from Pink Moon Farm and Four Elements Farm, which are two really lovely local farms. And that produce went directly to support our home delivery program. I love watching the repack on that, mm -hmm. that program when they're putting together the produce bags. It's just beautiful it product. Really is. But it's really not just healthy food that EFN focuses on. We really do purchase and grow diverse food. So we grow food out at Mother Earth Farm that's particularly culturally significant. Mm -hmm. um, we get input on that from customers to find out what they miss the most. Um, we also are really focusing in on buying pop-top cans, which mm -hmm. are great for our unhoused neighbors. And then um, we've been looking at culturally significant purchases as well, mm -hmm. like coconut milk, right? Which is such a wonderful one. Mm -hmm. A complete staple for so many diets here in our region. Um, but really what makes the most impact um, for our food purchasing program is our repack. Who so. doesn't love our repack program? I know. <laughs> I love going out there and talking to people as they're volunteering for it. It's just such a powerful action mm -hmm. taking place. So uh, we have a video from Juanita, our warehouse associate, who really specializes in repack. Thank you, Juanita. Hi, everyone. Thanks for supporting Abundance tonight. I am here in our repack room at our Lakewood warehouse. This is where we host three to four volunteer groups each week to repack pantry staples like oats, macaroni, and rice. Our repack volunteers represent community in action. EFN is able to purchase these bulk goods at a wholesale price and repackage them into family-sized portions thanks to our volunteers. For example, this two-pound bag of rice is $1.60 at the grocery store, but EFN is able to purchase 42,500 pounds in bulk for 46 cents per pound. This allows EFN to save thousands and enable us to purchase more food for the community. I mean, Juanita, thank you so much. It's 
crazy how much we are able to save 92 cents per two pounds that is unbelievable uh, i mean honestly who doesn't love the repack program i know it's just incredible and i don't I think I remember the very first time I ever did a repack, but I definitely remember the last couple that we all had to do. It really started when COVID really started to become a thing. And we obviously for safety reasons had to cancel all of our volunteer groups that were doing repack, but there was still food that had to be repacked yes. to go out into the community. So we had a couple of Fridays in a row where all of the staff members would get together safely, of course, and we'd take turns and we would be repacking macaroni for multiple Fridays and not gonna lie after a couple of those Fridays I was really missing our volunteers absolutely you have no desire for mac and cheese after one of those Fridays no and I think we all knew that there our volunteers are vital to EFN but it just really highlighted it during We've that seen time such an impact mm -hmm. and you know you would never want to be have a tragedy to remind you but at the same time boy, we sure have a brand new appreciation for a, for, for a group of people that we already valued. Um, we see that we can't function without them. We love you volunteers. Just exactly. Yeah, oh, a big really love for volunteers. volunteers. <laughs> uh, we also just, I mean, so I imagine you're thinking, what are we going to spend your money on tonight? And, and part of that <laughs> is um, we use your funds to purchase bulk foods mm -hmm. and it's really powerful. I mean, EFN is able to take a dollar of donation and leverage it into five meals. And part of that magic is because of the repack program. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we have some sponsors that have made tonight possible. So yeah. uh, we want to give our a, just a big round of love to our presenting sponsor, mm -hmm. Waste Connections. And Waste Connections has been with us for a really long time and they show up in a variety of ways. But I don't know if you're familiar with this, Elizabeth, but for years they built bikes at Christmas time. And while that's not food, it is important to families and it's yeah. a powerful thing. And then they distributed it through our food pantries mm -hmm. and um, they've done peanut butter dries and um, they even had a dunk tank one year to raise <laughs> yes. money for EFN, <laughs> pancake breakfast, you name it, they've done it. And it's not just upper leadership, it's employees deeply mm -hmm. engaged there. So. I just wanted to give a big thank you to Waste Connections. Yes, thank you so much for being such a wonderful community partner. So I also want to thank the lead sponsors. We have a few of those. We are so grateful for your support. So thank you, Boeing, Post Event Planning, Zach Rosenblum and Associates, Patelco, Virginia Mason, Franciscan Health, and Molina Health. Thank you so much for just being really wonderful and supportive of EFN and our mission. You know, a lot of those sponsors have been with us for a really for long, time, long time, time too. Yes. So um, I get to thank our supporting sponsors mm -hmm. tonight. So Whole Foods Market, Chuckles Office Supply, Payne Financial Services, Gordon Thomas Honeywell, Snuffins Catering, Financial Insights, WSECU, Coordinated Care, Columbia Bank, and Puget Sound Energy. Thank you. We couldn't do this without you. Really, really appreciate your support. Uh, we're getting to my favorite part of the night. It's my favorite part too. Yeah. <laughs> so every year uh, we produce a video and I like to think of it as um, kind of the year in review. It's like when Facebook comes up at the end of your year and shows all the sh photographs you've shown for the yeah. year. Um, so our year in review is this annual video and we've really used it today to highlight our response to the pandemic and and show where EFN is now. So I'm excited to show you our new video. The pandemic has been, it's been a real eye opener for us. Almost two years into the pandemic. And what we know is that the need is just as great now as it was two years ago. And that need two years ago rose drastically from the time before. In an average year, we see over 1.9 million visits to food pantries in Pierce County. And the food pantries that are affiliated with us at this point are over 70. And that network covers every part of Pierce County from the most urban areas all the way to the rural. And Pierce County is pretty big, so it's a lot of footprint that we're covering at this point. One of the items that we're most proud of is the food that comes from our Mother Earth Farm 
which is just truly a beautiful piece of property out in the Puyallup Valley. And we grow over 100,000 pounds of food there. And it's a combination of people that make that happen. It's our staff, it's our volunteers who are numerous, they're very good weed pickers. And it's um, the community that comes out there. You know, literally it often goes from the field all the way to your doorstep in 48 hours. So families have faced all kinds of disruptions this, throughout the pandemic, you know, from childcare to work shortages to uh, work stoppages uh, to disrupted income. I mean, it's, it's as if everything possible may have gone wrong for some of our families. And, you know, the reality is some of our families experienced huge loss. And so one of the things that's been so important that I feel really proud about is that we've done our best to continue to keep people fed through that. It's become crucial that they at least know they can go to their local food pantry and get food for today. And then get food to feed their kids, they can get food to feed their elderly parents, um, that there's resources out there. There's a lot of, of unknowns out there. The thing we know is that there are lots of hungry people and that our mission is to be sure that they have the food that they need today. One of the things that I most appreciate with the support that we receive from EFN is that, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, we had a very innovative approach to how we wanted to address food security specifically in our region. And EFN was super open to pivoting with us and was right there to support us. Even when we had a triple digit increase, they were able to walk with us to help meet that demand in our area. We wouldn't have been able to do it without them. Um, Emergency Food Network um, actually provides 67% of the food that comes through our door. We just could not do it without Emergency Food Network. It would be, not be possible. Um, they also help us um, with funds for um, staff and for buying food. So, um, you know, we're just so grateful for Emergency Food Network. It's thanks to all of you that we've been able to feed our neighbors through the pandemic and frankly for the 30 years before that. And we're so grateful for all of your support and we're asking you to join us. Join us now, make a pledge, make a donation, bring food, volunteer, do your part and help our neighbors in need. We need your support and we need you to partner with us. You know, all the time I talk about community and action and this is a fantastic way to be part of that community is by supporting Emergency Food Network. Thank you. I think the ask is clear. We're asking you to join us and to support us. We've already had some amazing donors mm -hmm. pledge. Uh, the Dunbars, Clara Ladd, Sharon Snuffin, the Ulin family, the Olson family are just a couple of the people that have already come through. So uh, we're asking you to join them in feeding our neighbors in need and um, just want to tell you how much we appreciate all of your support. It's true. Honestly, we cannot say thank you enough. We are so grateful for your support. Everyone who's already done the raise the paddle, everyone who's already purchased auction items or is still bidding, but please don't expect to win if you're bidding against Michelle. <laughs> um, but honestly, if you haven't had a chance, that's okay. We still have an auction that's open until tomorrow night, eight o'clock. There's a link below. Just go to it. There is still time to be involved, to make a raise the paddle gift or to get an auction item. And I, I want to say your support just doesn't end at the auction, mm -hmm. right? So Good I point. talk about that community in, in action and there's so many opportunities. You can volunteer with us. You can do a food and fun drive. Um, you can do a basket at your work. There's so many different ways to help support us, especially through the last quarter of the year, which is our highest need quarter. Absolutely. Um, so we want to tell you that. And then we also just want you to think for a moment about um, what it means to not have a place to live and enough food to eat. I mean, not only can you not thrive, but you can't survive. And, mm -hmm. and that's really what you're doing is helping our neighbors to have those basics met. Thank you. I hope you're going to join us. 2022 will be 40 years. We can't wait to see you there. Thank you. Thank you.